Shall we kneel for a word of prayer? Again, loving Father in heaven, we invite the presence of your Holy Spirit Amen. to be with us and to give me the words to speak that will touch the hearts, Lord, of your people. And we just want to thank you for the blessing of being here. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Brothers and sisters, this caught my attention. This scripture quote, As he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy as I am holy. Amen. Without holiness, brothers and sisters, and I know I'm speaking to the choir, but no one will be with God in heaven. And that's how serious this is. And of holiness, can we achieve it of ourselves? No. no. Of ourselves, we cannot achieve holiness. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, which Jesus Christ sent when he went back to heaven, we have the opportunity to be and receive holiness. As Jehovah is holy, he requires his people to be holy, pure, undefiled. For without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Those who worship him in sincerity and truth will be accepted by him. If church members will put away all self-worship and will receive in their hearts the love of God and for one another that fill Christ's heart, our Heavenly Father will constantly manifest his power through them. Let his people be drawn together with the cords of divine love then the world would recognize the miracle-working power of God. Brothers and sisters, our world is in a mess. And it tells me from what I am seeing, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but what I'm seeing in this world today, in Las Vegas, 500 people wounded from a shooter, 36 killed, a church in Texas, 26 people killed. Brothers and sisters, what do you think this is going to do? It's going to force our government to bring Sunday laws and force us to make a decision that we have to make. We have to stand for our Lord Jesus Christ. Because if we do not stand for our Lord Jesus Christ, we won't, as Peter when he betrayed his Lord, like I said, I'm getting ahead of myself, but when he betrayed his Lord, he went out and repented. But brothers and sisters, we're not going to have that opportunity. We will not be able to repent. We will be lost. And we will be one of... We will be a casualty to the Lord. <clears throat> In Christ's Object Lessons, page 102, it tells us the grace of Christ is to control the temper and the voice. Its workings will be seen in politeness and tender regard shown by brother for brother in kind, encouraging words. An angel's presence is in the home. Brothers and sisters, there's an angel present with each one of us. It's an amazing, an amazing testimony for what God has done. The life breathes a sweet perfume which ascends to God as holy incense. Love is manifested in kindness, gentleness, forbearance, forbearance and long-suffering. Our countenances are changed. Do you believe that? Instead of having a terrible scowl like this, we're to have the love of Christ shining out. We're to reflect the character of our Lord Jesus Christ to those that are around us. 
This is what we're to do, brothers and sisters. The leaven of truth works a change in the whole man, making the coarse refined, the rough gentle, the selfish generous. By it the impure are cleansed, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Through its life-giving power it brings all there is of mind and soul and strength into harmony with the divine life. Man with his human nature becomes a partaker of divinity. Christ is honored in excellence and perfection of character. And as these changes are effected, angels break forth into rapturous song, and God and Christ rejoice over the souls fashioned after the divine similitude. Be ye holy as I am holy. Our Lord Jesus Christ came to this world from heaven to give us an example of what holiness is. And as I said, of ourselves, we cannot achieve this. It's only through the power of the Holy Spirit. But He combined His divinity with humanity. And do you realize that this humanity that He combined with divinity will be Him with Him throughout all creation? And He had to go into the presence of the Father three times before the Father would give Him permission to come to this world. And why did Jesus have to die, brothers and sisters? Because He died for each one of us that we might live. This is how much God the Father loves His children. What an amazing testimony of what God has done for us. And if I can find a quote here real quick. And it says, Behold what manner of the love the Father has bestowed upon us, and this is 5T744, that we should be called the sons of God. Can you imagine being called the sons of God? The Creator who spoke and everything came into existence. Oh, and He has made us the sons and daughter of God. But when He came to this world and combined His divinity with humanity, what I read to you before about meekness and gentleness, He was hounded, our Creator was hounded from place to place. There was no place in this world that He created that was safe for him to be. Brothers and sisters, one of his own disciples betrayed him. And then another disciple and I wanted to read this to you. I can, I can tell you but I, You remember Peter denied his Lord. After just, ex just saying, I would rather die than deny you. Brothers and sisters, they arrested our Lord Jesus Christ. And he took him into the judgment hall. And a lady said to Peter, aren't you one of his disciples? And Peter denied him. And again another lady said, Aren't you one of his disciples? And Peter denied him. And then again they were, he was asked, Are you not one of his disciples? And the cock crowed. Just as Jesus said it would. And three times he denied his Lord. And he went out and repented and wept bitterly. Brothers and sisters, you realize that we too are going to have to stand the test. The test, and it was so just like that. Peter had denied his Lord without even, without even thinking. The words came out of his mouth, I know him not. 
and brothers and sisters, a national Sunday law is coming. As I said to you before, the things that took place, these, these mass murders, these killings, these shootings, it's, it's going on one right after the other. And as I said, this is going to cause the people to put pressure on the government to create a National Sunday Law. And the question I have for you and for me when this happens and the pressure is applied, will we be able to stand? That's the question each one of us must ask ourselves. And we don't want to wait till that event takes place. We need to ask that question to ourselves now so that we can be prepared for that event when it comes. And it could be, you know, we've preached the coming of a national Sunday law, but what has taken place makes me to think it's nearer than ever before. In Matthew 5.48, it tells us, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And Hebrews 12.14 Follow peace with all men and holiness in which no man shall see the Lord. And then Revelation, what are we, Revelation 14, 1 to 5. Brothers and sisters, remember it says we are to be holy? And in Revelation 14, there's a special group of people that God especially ordained. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as a voice of a great thunder, and as a voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne, the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed, lifted up from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no what? Guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Ephesians 4 and verse 20. And I better check my time because I, I'm... <laughs> yes. Ephesians 4. Starting in verse 20. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation by the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. <coughs> Signs of the time, December 14, December 17, 1902, tell us, No man receives holiness as a birthright or as a gift from any other human being. Holiness is the gift of God. Through Christ, those who receive the Savior become the sons of God. Oh, I love that. They are His spiritual children, born again, renewed in righteousness and true holiness. And their minds are changed. Brothers and sisters, we become a new being when we receive the holiness of Christ. And it's within ourselves. And it's such a wonderful testimony. We are adopted into God's family. 
Amen. Oh, what a testimony. And they become conformed, and we become conformed to His likeness. Changed by His Spirit from glory to glory. From cherishing supreme love for self, we come to cherish supreme love for God and Christ. Letter 2A, 1892. Sanctification. What is sanctification? Holiness. That's what sanctification is, brothers and sisters. The sanctification of the soul is a comp accomplished through steadfastly beholding our Lord Jesus Christ by faith as the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth. The power of truth is trans to transform heart and character. Its effect is not like a dash of color here and there upon the canvas. The whole character is transformed into the likeness of our Lord Jesus Christ. I love those, that thought. It's if, uh, <clears throat> the grace of Christ is essential every day, every hour, every moment. Unless it is with us continuously, continually the inconsistencies of the natural heart will appear and the life will present a divided service. The character is to be full of grace and truth. Wherever the religion of Christ works, it will brighten and sweeten every detail of life with more than earthly joy and a higher than earthly peace. And God tells us, I want you to be holy as I am holy. Amen. And it's the inspired apostle, 5T743, declared that without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. I, I will keep repeating this, brothers and sisters, because it's so important. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And I want to be there, brothers and sisters. I want to be part of that company. By sin, the image of God has been marred and well nigh obliterated. It is the work of the gospel to restore that which was lost. And we are to cooperate with the divine agency in this work. And how can we come into harmony with God? How shall we receive His likeness? unless we obtain a knowledge of Him. You see, brothers and sisters, as we behold, I behold Al. I see Him. I see Him as He is. And this is the way it is with Christ. As we behold Christ, we become changed. And not only become changed, but we become changed into His image. Mm -hmm. And what an amazing testimony for each one of us to be changed into the image of Christ. Oh, I can dwell upon that thought. Because you see, brothers and sisters, as we become changed and become the children of God, the whole world is in confusion. The whole world is in sin. And the spirit of prophecy tells me that few are going to be saved to God's kingdom. And that's such a sad testimony. Seven billion people in the world roughly today. And few are to be saved to God's kingdom. It saddens my heart. Personal religion among us is at a low ebb. There's much tongue religion. People say, oh, I believe in the Lord. <laughs> but is it in the heart? That's where it has to come from, brothers and sisters, from the heart. 
If God has given us light, what are we to do with that light? We're to reveal it to others, brothers and sisters. And that's how we reflect the character of God, is by revealing Him to those around us and to the world. You know, well, I won't go there. But anyway, what we need is to know God and the power of His love that is revealed in Christ. Oh, our Lord Jesus Christ. I can just, in desire of ages, have you all read this book? If you haven't, oh, I've read it several times, brothers and sisters. And each time I read it, I find something new. And it makes me more and more want to see my Lord Jesus Christ and what He has done for me and for each one of us. It's such an amazing testimony. Calvary, brothers and sisters, there's a chapter in here, Calvary. We talked earlier about Jesus and he was hounded from place to place. And one of his disciples betrayed him. And another betrayed him. And yet, Jesus never spoke an unkind word. That's why I read that paragraph. Because this is where we're to be. It's so easy for Satan to tempt us. And for us to go off on a tangent. But even when our Lord Jesus Christ He was wounded for our transgressions He was bruised for our iniquities The chastisement of our peace was upon Him and with His stripes we are healed Isaiah 53 Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For, her, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant as a, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely... He hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the cross was placed upon his shoulders. And Jesus Christ hadn't eaten. He hadn't had anything. There was a crown of thorns placed upon his head. And then they were beaten down upon his crown. And blood came forward. Oh, brothers and sisters. And he fell to the ground with a cross upon him. The heavy cross upon him. And he was unconscious. And they... And, the, and he was awakened. And brothers and sisters, what a testimony. They placed the, the cross upon his shoulders again. And he walked a couple of places, paces. And he fell forward. And Simon, the Cyrenian, was coming in from the country. And they grabbed him and place a cross upon his shoulders. And from that experience, his life was forever changed. Brothers and sisters, when we accept our Lord Jesus Christ and become one of the sons of God, our lives are changed. I think of the times when Margie and I we would go to plays, we would go to shows, we would go each year to Las Vegas for our wedding anniversary. And brothers and sisters, our whole lives 
When God came into our life, our whole lives totally changed. Just as I'm sure each one of your lives changed as well. And this is what God wants to do for us. And then, and again, Christ never spoke the unkind words. And the nail were driven through each of his hands. And they were driven through his feet. And he was placed on that cross, brothers and sisters, where you and I should have been. And he died that we might live. And this is what our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. It is by beholding we become changed. By dwelling upon the love of God and our Savior, by contemplating the perfection of the divine character, and claiming the righteousness of Christ as ours by faith, we are to be transformed, and I can't even, it, it amazes me to say this, we are to be transformed into His image. What a testimony. There are, thank God, brighter and more cheerful pictures which the Lord has presented to us. <coughs> The Son of God left His Father's throne. And I can't believe that He clothed His divinity with humanity. And that this humanity will be with Him throughout all creation. As I was studying this, that's the first time I had heard that. That it will be with Him throughout eternity. The God of heaven, what He has done for His children, that we might live with Him. And He wants us to live with Him, brothers and sisters. This is the beauty of the Lord that we serve. He wants us to be there with Him. And we want to be there as well. In heaven, God is all in all. Their holiness reigns supreme. There is nothing to mar the perfect harmony with God in the heavenly kingdom. All is beauty. All is grace. All is holiness. And the question is, are we willing to do what it takes to be where there with Him? That's the question we have to answer ourselves, brothers and sisters. Because we can continue to go through this world and enjoy the things of this world. But if we do that, brothers and sisters, we are not going to be with our Lord Jesus Christ in His heavenly kingdom. If we are indeed journeying thither, the Spirit of heaven will dwell in our hearts here. If holiness has no attraction for us, then we may be sure that our hope for heaven is in vain. Perfect conformity to the will of God is the high aim to be constantly before the Christian. I have a question. What is the character of God? I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. God's Ten Commandment law is His character. And brothers and sisters, this is a character that I have to have and that each one of us has to have to be there with Him, brothers and sisters. And he died that we might be able to live and be there with him and have his character reflected in us that we may reflect it to the world. Perfect conformity to the will of God is a high aim to be constantly before the Christian. We will love to talk of God of Jesus, of the home of the bliss and purity, 
which Christ has prepared for them that love him. The contemplation of these themes when the soul feasts upon the blessed assurance of God, the apostles, the apostle represents as tasting the power of the world to come. Ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Leviticus 19.21 Is holiness rapture? No. Holiness is not rapture. It is entire, an entire surrender to the will of God. It is living by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. It is doing the will of our Heavenly Father. It is trusting in God in trial, in darkness, as well as in light. It is walking by faith and not by sight. It is relying on God with unquestioning confidence and rest in His love. And I thought I was going to have a lot of time, but I may not. <laughs> Our hearts are evilly continually. And who can change them? We can do all things, brothers and sisters, but only our Lord Jesus Christ can change our hearts and to make them pure and holy as He is holy. It is walking by faith and not by sight. It is relying upon God with unquestioning confidence and resting in His love. I feel sorry for the world, brothers and sisters, because so many do not know our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's interesting that my talk today, I asked the Lord to give me the words to speak, and it's interesting, I am nowhere close to where I was going to be in my talk. <laughs> this is what God does for us when, he, when we ask Him for the Holy Spirit to guide us and to give us the words to speak. And again, holiness is the gift of God through Christ. And those who receive the Savior become the sons of God. I'm going to repeat that to you, brothers and sisters, because I love to hear that. For each one of us, I love to hear that. Our minds are changed, and we're clearer visions, we behold eternal realities, and we are adopted in God's family, and become conformed to His likeness, changed by His Spirit from glory to glory. And from cherishing supreme love for self, we come to cherish supreme love for God in Christ. Accepting Christ as our personal Savior. Leviticus 11.44 says, I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Amazing Grace 2.17, it is the glory of God to give virtue to His children. He desires to see no man or woman. He desires to see man or woman reaching the highest standard. And when by faith lay hold on the power of Christ, when they plead His unfailing promises and claim them as their own, when an importunity that will not be denied they seek, for the power of the Holy Spirit, they will be made complete in Him. John, where, where do you find the Holy Spirit? John chapter 14, John chapter 16. John chapter 14 And verse 16 says, And I will pray the Father, and he, and he shall give you another comforter, 
that he may abide with you ever. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, that because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come unto you. Yet a little while and the world seeth me not. But you see me because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in ye. And he that hath my commandments and keepeth them. He it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will manifest myself to him. Judah saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto thy father and unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him and will come unto him and will make our abode with him. And he that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings and the word which he hears not mine, but of the father that dwelleth in me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. And peace I leave you with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Brothers and sisters, what we do for worship morning and evening is we have scripture and we memorize scripture, Margie and myself. And this is the beauty of the Bible, of His Word, that, that the scripture comes to us. And it's such an amazing testimony that the Holy Spirit brings these things to ourselves. Verse 5 in John 16, But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you askest me whither thou going, whither thou goest. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of Sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will do what? He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. What an amazing God we serve. Amen. You know, I feel sorry for those that in the world. We're going into Spokane to feed the homeless. And those poor people, brothers and sisters, that are on the street, and they have no hope. They don't know God. And I feel my heart goes out to them. I feel just terrible that this is the condition that we're in today in this world. And that sir, so many are going to be lost because they do not know our Lord Jesus Christ as it is ours to know Him. And what's, what an amazing testimony we can share with these people. Matthew 6.22 says, well, before that, complete subjugation, subjection through Christ to the will of God is our only safety. The selfish thoughts and impulses that sweep through the soul produces discordant notes. HP 189, paragraph 5. Can be separated from life only as a whole being is under the control of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Savior's words to all unruly, unruly elements is, Peace, be still. 
Christ, Christ welcomes all who accept him as their Savior and rule over them as their King. Our zeal for the advancement of God's kingdom is to mark us as faithful subjects of the cross of Christ. And Matthew 6.22 says, The light of the body is the eye. And as we were talking about before, brothers and sisters, Christ wants us to behold Him so that when people see us, they behold, not that we're anything special, but that they behold our Lord Jesus Christ because of the character that we have, His character that we have within us. Such an amazing testimony. He who truly loves God and fears God, striving with a singleness of purpose to do His will, will place His body and mind, His heart, His soul, His strength under the service of God. Thus it was with Enoch. He walked with God. His mind was not defiled by an impure defective eyesight. And those who are determined to make the will of God their own must serve and please God in a few things, in everything. Brothers and sisters, this is what we want. This is what we need to please God in all things. Second Peter. Second Peter, chapter one. You should have this memorized. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of our dear Lord Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained precious faith with us. What? Faith with us. Through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. According as His divine power, this text is just filled with the things we need. According as His power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye may, what? Be partakers of the divine nature. To be partakers of Christ, Christ's divine nature. What a, what a blessing, what a privilege having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, and beside this giving all diligence, all diligence, brothers and sisters, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to brotherly god godliness kindness, and to brotherly kindness Charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath got forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall what? Ye shall never fall. The blueprint, brothers and sisters, for holiness is right here before us. And this is what God wants for each one of us. As I said, He wants us to be with Him. And so therefore in His Word, He has given us the blueprint for holiness so that we can be with Him. For God so loved the world, we should know that. That He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. 
and my mind just went blank. <laughs> John 3.16 For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is a condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth the truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, for they are wrought in our Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, my time is almost done. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. RC 164. Let's go, no, let's go to Maranatha. I love Maranatha. It's such a wonderful devotion. And ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord, am holy, and, I, and have severed you from the people, other people, that ye should be mine. That's not it. Leviticus 20, 26. And then Maranatha. I also saw many do not realize what they must be in order to live in the sight of the Lord. Without a high priest in the sanctuary through the time of trouble. Those who receive the seal of the living God and are protected in the time of trouble must reflect the image of Jesus fully. I saw that many were neglecting and this is sad, the preparation, so needful, and we're looking to the time of refreshing in the latter rain, to fit them to stand in the day of the Lord and to live in His sight. Oh, how many I saw in the time of trouble without a shelter. Oh, brothers and sisters, so sad. They were without a shelter in the time of trouble. They had neglected that needful preparation. Therefore, they could not receive the refreshing that all must have to fit them to live in the sight of a holy God. Those who fail to purify their souls in obeying the whole truth will come to the time of the falling of the plagues and then see that they needed to be hewed and squared for the building. But there will be no mediator. Brothers and sisters, Jesus will have left the most holy place. He's been there since 1844. And he will have left the most holy place. And there is no one to hear our sins. Such a sad testimony. I saw that none could share the refreshing, refreshing unless they obtained the victory over what? Every besetment, over pride, selfishness, love of the world, and over every wrong word and action. And brothers and sisters, how easy it is if we're not thinking to say the wrong thing, the wrong word to someone, and to hurt them. And brothers and sisters, we have to have the Holy Spirit guiding us every moment of the time. We are today to watch that we offend not in word or deed. We must today seek God and be determined that we will not rest satisfied without His presence. We should watch and work and pray as though this were the last day that would be granted unto us. How intensely earnest then would be our lives. How closely would, be, would we follow Jesus in all our words and deeds. Be holy, for I am holy. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to be cutting this short. But I'm going to read this and then I want to look at the seal of God for just a moment. Because we must have the seal of our Lord Jesus Christ 
if we are to see God coming in the clouds of glory. We are to, we're on test and trial. Satan is playing the game of life for our souls. No matter what may be our inherited or cultivated tendencies to wrong, we can overcome only through the power of God that gives. The Holy Spirit, as I told you, is our helper. As he which has called you holy, be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. The people of God are to love as brothers and sisters. We are to love our Lord Jesus Christ with all our heart, mind, and soul, and our neighbor as ourselves. And as we study in Sabbath school, who is our neighbor? Everyone. Everyone is our neighbor. Ed was doing my talk. <laughs> Seeing as ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with pure heart, fervently being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And I'm going to just say, the seal of God will, place, will be placed only on those who what? Bear the likeness of Christ in character. The seal of God only if we bear the likeness of Christ in character. Those who receive the, see who receive the seal of God and are protected in the time of trouble must do what? Reflect His image fully. Last Day Events, page 221, paragraph 1. And there's many quotes that I've given you today, brothers and sisters, that come out of the spirit of prophecy. I basically use only the spirit of prophecy in God's Word. That way I stay out of trouble. <laughs> the seal of God will never be placed upon the forehead of an impure man or woman. It will never be placed upon the forehead of an ambitious, world-loving man or woman. It will never be placed upon the forehead of men or women of false tongues or deceit deceitful hearts. All who receive the seal must be without spot before God. Candidates for heaven. Love is expressed in obedience. And perfect love casteth out all fear. Those who love God have the seal of God in their foreheads and work the works of God. SD, page 51, 1894. And I'll close with this. Are we striving with all our God-given powers to reach the measures of the stature of man and woman in Christ Jesus? Are we seeking for His fullness, ever reaching higher and higher, trying to attain that perfection of character? Because like I told you before, brothers and sisters, and I want to repeat it, repeat it, none of us can have perfection without the Holy Spirit. Amen. Love expressed in obedience and perfect love casteth out all fear of those who love God and have the seal of God in their foreheads. Work the works of God. And are we striving with all our God-given powers? to reach that measure of stature in men and women? Are we seeking for His fullness, ever reaching higher and higher, trying to attain that perfection of character? And when God's servants reach this point, oh, what a testimony. They will be sealed in their foreheads. They, the recording angel will declare, it is done they will be complete in Him and whose they are beyond creation and redemption. Let us pray. <coughs> yeah. 
Dear loving Father in heaven, we thank you that we can be called the sons and daughters of God. What an amazing testimony, Father. And that you have given us the Holy Spirit to help us to perfect our characters so that we can be one with you in every way, Father. And when you come in the clouds of glory, Father, that we may rise up in the air to meet you and go home with you to heaven, to live with you out eternity. Our humanity is combined with divinity. Oh, Father, what an amazing thought. And we thank you for those blessings, Father. And we praise your name. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.